Hey sugar, welcome back. I'm Rox of Roxar Bakes, and this week I have a quick decorating tutorial on how to make a kawaii jellyfish step-by-step. -step. Let's get into it. Mm. Here's a tool card. Save, screenshot it. I link the recipes for my Swiss meringue buttercream and funfetti cake below, and I will link where I got all of my tools below as well. You can use whatever sprinkles you'd like. They're actually a little semi-hidden, you'll see. For the sphere pan, I use one portion of my Funfetti round cake that I've already made a video for. You can find that in the link below. What's different about this version of the Funfetti recipe is that I use Jimmy's versus confetti sprinkles because I wanted a more ocean themed effect. I'm dusting the sprinkles so they don't sink to the bottom and that there is a more even distribution. I learned this from Mary Berry. So she actually dusts her fruit so they don't sink to the bottom of the cake and there's more even distribution. Same concept applies for sprinkles. Here's a demonstration of how I lined the sphere cake pan. I cut out a large circle of parchment paper and I cut out six to eight slices, making sure the cuts do not connect in the center like a pizza. I do not butter the pan because I want the cake to climb up evenly along the sides. Bake it 335 degrees for 35 minutes. I just wanna show you the first thing that I make and set aside. It is the jelly, jellyfish uh, squigglies. Like the, they're not the tentacles, but the little arms on the jellyfish. And so I take it kind of this hamburger way and I make zigzags across to a point. And it doesn't really matter that they're super exact. I think the more character, the better. And don't worry about the wafer paper cracking. That happens, it's really dry. But kind of, get them pretty skinny and you'll see how we use them later. But here we go. Look at that. That looks really great. Kind of better than the other ones I prepped before together. So the next step would be filling and crumb coating my cake. That's really easy. Let's get into that now. For the sake of time, building a round cake is pretty standard. So I'm going to move through this as if you know how to do this part. My suspicion is that the adhesion of the sprinkles would be more of interest, so those tips are coming up. If enough of you let me know that you'd like a basics of building a cake, a Cake 101 video, I'll work on that. Add a little frosting to the cake board so it doesn't slip around, and then fill. Repeat until you're to the top layer, then crumb the cake and refrigerate for five to 10 minutes. And we're gonna use the blue buttercream I was mentioning earlier, and that is to give it the water effect. And you'll see as I'm building the cake, what I mean. Again, for the sake of time, moving through this frosting portion. Okay. So now I am going to add sprinkles to the cake. One tip that I have is use shortening to adhere the smaller sprinkles to your finger and then you can just press it along the cake. Another thing as well is that you don't want your cake to be too cold, otherwise it has a hard time sticking, it'll just roll off. So let's make sure my cake is at the right temperature. Test it here. And I really just thought that the white and blue would go very well together and that it could give you that ocean feeling of bubbles. I think this tastes really good too. I like that. I'm gonna keep the sprinkles concentrated to this section because there will be an overlap of the fondant from the jellyfish head.
There we go. So now we're going to get into decorating the head of the jellyfish. And that is super easy. I'm going to add a little buttercream to the center. And this is just to frost it. And then we're going to transfer it over to the top of the other cake. For the head portion of the cake, I first fill between the top and the bottom layer. And you can see I use a regular angled spatula for all of this and the application goes on really smooth. I've seen some folks use a piece of acetate to get around the curves really tightly, but fondant is going on this. I just get it as smooth as I can. And it's actually still really smooth with an angled spatula. It seems really seamless. Once it's filled, time to crumb coat. You might be wondering how much buttercream I use for this recipe. I recommended in the tool cards that you use two portions and I color a little more than half of that blue and I leave the rest white. I shaved a little bit of the bottom of the round so the cake won't roll away as I decorate. I still use a level though to make sure it's all even. And there we have it. Let's get this one in the fridge. Okay, so now I'm going to give the head a little frost as well before we get it attached to the body and get the fondant on it. So now that I have the straw inserted into the cake and I've added a little bit of buttercream on top for this to adhere to, I'm gonna transfer it over. I'm gonna try and get level with the cake. Okay, so we have it on and I'm just gonna take a little bit more of the buttercream to kind of fill in this crack here. The, not really a crack, but maybe a gap between the two cakes. That should be fine. See? Okay, and now I'm gonna move this over. Here's the fondant, it's about 14 inches all the way around at a minimum. It looks a little bit like a ghost, which is hilarious to me. Maybe we'll do a ghost project around Halloween. So this part looks really good to me. I'm going to use my kitchen only shears to even it out a little bit. So it's looking really good. I want to attach some eyes now. And what I did was rolled out, well, I colored a little piece of fondant black and I rolled it out and I have this Russian piping tip which I thought would be really cute for its eyes. Um, so I'm just gonna punch two holes. Or use cornstarch, I should have done that. Or powdered sugar. And with the remaining black fondant, I will make a little mouth. Really sticky still, which is nice. I just rolled it out. You probably use a clay extruder to do the same exact thing and get something really even. 
I'm going to use a little bit of water to adhere it to the fondant. So I'm just going to paint a little on the back. Cute. Great. So now that I put his face on, I'm going to put his legs on next. And to do that, I'm just taking the little wafer papers that we actually cut out earlier. And I want it to have kind of a soft look, so I just wet the back. And it starts to curl a little bit. So it doesn't matter that they're exactly perfect and even. And I actually wet the smooth side, not the bumpy side. Line and hearing. And if anything seems a little too long, then you can just go back and cut it later. And I'm going to, while it's wet, I'm going to Curl it up a little like this. It's so cute, isn't it? Careful not to knock the sprinkles out. And once you wet them, you want to try and apply them as quickly as possible because they do dry and they do start to curl. Just try not to wet it, over wet it, like I did just on that one. How cute is that? Now I want to add a little bit of blush to the cheeks to make them look a little more lively. And so I have a little bit of pink luster dust and I'm just going to use a brush that I only use for food products and dab a little on the end and then definitely brush it off, kind of practice that blush motion. Here, I'm just adding a little eye glisten because a lot of Hawaii uh, projects have those. They're really cute. And I'm just using one of the pearls we used earlier for the body of the cake. And I'm just using a little bit of buttercream. If you create a project inspired by this cake, tag me on my Instagram so that I can feature my favorite posts in my stories every single week. In the meantime, I hope you have a stellar week and I'll see you next Saturday. Thank you, bye.